We're asked to find the general solution to the given equation. Notice this equation represents a linear, second order, non-homogeneous system of ODEs that can be used to model a mass spring system with periodic forcing. This system has a general solution of x equals x sub c plus x sub p, where x sub c, the complementary solution, is the general solution of the associated homogeneous system, x double prime equals a times x, and x sub p is a particular solution. Suppose that omega is not one of the natural frequencies of x double prime equals a times x, meaning negative omega squared is not an eigenvalue of matrix A. Then we let x sub p equal c times cosine omega t, where c is an unknown constant vector. We determine the constant vector c by determining the inverse of the sum of a and omega squared i times negative f. If negative omega squared is an eigenvalue of matrix A, then the sum of a and omega squared i is not invertible, and we cannot use this x sub p as a particular solution. If we wish to keep the forcing term in the units of force, say newtons, then we write the system in the equation shown here on the left, mx double prime plus kx times g times cosine omega t. Notice in our case, if we compare this to the equation that we are given, the only change we have to make is that the column matrix with entries cosine 2t, 0, 0, needs to be written as the vector 1, 0, 0 times cosine 2t, as shown here on the right. So here we have the correct form for the given equation. The next step is to solve for x double prime by multiplying both sides by m inverse. We also let matrix A equal m inverse times k and vector f equal m inverse times vector g. So again, multiplying both sides of the equation by m inverse and simplifying, we have x double prime equals m inverse times k times x plus m inverse times g times cosine omega t, which we simplify to x double prime equals a times x plus f times cosine omega t. And now let's determine the general solution to the given equation. So again, our first step is to determine the inverse of matrix M, which is a three by three matrix on the far left. Because this is a diagonal matrix, we determine the inverse by simply taking the reciprocals of the entries along the main diagonal, which I've shown here on the right in blue. So now the next step is to multiply both sides of the equation by m inverse, which is shown here. Simplifying, m inverse times m times x double prime is equal to x double prime. m inverse times k times vector x gives us the three by three matrix with entries negative three, zero, zero, one, negative two, zero, and zero, two, negative one times vector x. And then plus m inverse times the vector g results in the same vector of the vector one, zero, zero, and then we have times cosine two t. Now that we have the given equation in the form that we need, the next step is to determine the complementary solution to the associated homogeneous system given by x double prime equals, we'll call this three by three matrix, matrix A times vector x. Recall to do this, we begin by determining the eigenvalues of the three by three matrix. This means we set up the equation, the determinant of the difference of matrix A and lambda I equals zero, and solve for lambda. So here we have our setup. Notice I is the three by three identity matrix. Simplifying, we have the determinant of this three by three matrix equals zero. Let's find the determinant on the next slide. To find the determinant, let's use the first row because the first row has two zero entries. The determinant of the three by three matrix is equal to the entry in row one, column one, which is negative three minus lambda times the determinant of the matrix after we delete row one and column one, which gives us negative three minus lambda times the determinant of the two by two matrix with entries negative two minus lambda, zero, two, and negative one minus lambda. Now we evaluate the two by two determinant, which is equal to negative two minus lambda times negative one minus lambda minus zero times two, which gives us these three factors must equal zero. Following our theorem below, we do want to list the eigenvalues from greatest to least, and therefore we have lambda sub one equals negative one, lambda sub two equals negative two, and lambda sub three equals negative three. This also indicates negative omega one squared equals negative one, negative omega two squared equals negative two, and negative omega three squared equals negative three. And therefore omega one is one, omega two is square root two, and omega three is square root three. We'll need these later to determine the general solution. 
Now we find corresponding eigenvectors for each eigenvalue. Recall to find a corresponding eigenvector, we set up the equation the difference of a and lambda i times vector v equals a zero vector, then determine a vector v. So for lambda sub one equals negative one, here we have the setup. Simplifying inside the parentheses, the result is a three by three matrix with entries negative two, zero, zero, one, negative one, zero, and zero, three, zero. Times vector v equals a zero vector. And now we need to solve the system. Let's write an augmented matrix and write it in reduced row echelon form. So here we have the augmented matrix and also written in reduced row echelon form. Notice row three is a row of zeros indicating we have an infinite number of solutions. Also notice V3 is a free variable. Row one indicates that V1 equals zero. Row two indicates V2 equals zero. And V3 is a free variable. V3 equals V3. So if we let V3 equal one, we have a corresponding eigenvector, the vector v1 as the vector 0, 0, 1. And now we do the same for lambda sub two and lambda sub three. I'm not gonna show that work here, but a corresponding eigenvector for lambda sub two is the vector 0, 1, negative two, and a corresponding eigenvector for lambda sub three is one, negative one, one. Now we have all the information we need to determine the general solution to the associated homogeneous system. Using our formula in the upper right-hand corner, because all the eigenvalues are negative, we have x sub c, the complementary solution, is equal to the eigenvector v1 times the sum of a1 cosine t and b1 sine t, plus the eigenvector v2 times the sum of a2 cosine square root 2t and b2 sine square root 2t, plus the eigenvector v3, which is the vector 1, negative 1, 1, times the sum of a3 cosine square root 3t and b3 sine square root 3t. The next step is to determine a particular solution x sub p for the original non-homogeneous system. And we use the formula x sub p equals c times cosine omega t. Looking at our equation, notice omega is equal to two, giving us x sub p is equal to c times cosine 2t. So again, notice here we're using omega equals two, which is not our natural frequency, or because it's not equal to omega one, omega two, or omega three, or because negative omega squared, which would be negative four, is not an eigenvalue, this will work for x sub p. The next step is to determine the constant vector c using the formula shown here on the left. This gives us vector c is equal to the inverse of matrix A plus the square of omega times the three by three identity matrix, and then times the opposite of vector f, where vector f is the vector one, zero, zero, and therefore negative vector f is the vector negative one, zero, zero. Let's continue on the next slide. Simplifying inside the parentheses, we have the inverse of the three by three matrix with entries one, zero, zero in the first row, one, two, zero in the second row, and zero, two, three in the third row. And then we have times the vector negative one, zero, zero, the inverse of the three by three matrix is the matrix shown here on the right, where in the first row we have entries one, zero, zero. In the second row we have entries negative one half, one half, zero. In the third row we have entries one third, negative one third, and one third. And then again we have times the vector negative one, zero, zero. And the result is vector C is the vector negative one, one half, negative one third. And therefore a particular solution is X of P equals the vector negative one, one half, negative one third times cosine two t. And now putting x sub c and x sub p together, we can form the general solution to the original system of differential equations. Again, we have x or x of t equals x sub c, the complementary solution, plus x sub p, a particular solution. This is the general solution we are looking for. I hope you found this helpful.